Alright, so I can basically go back to where I was. And I can completely agree, I guess, with Aaron's stance that uh, oh, I'll check that room later because I definitely kind of overburden myself here with things to do, and I want the I want the carrot on the end of the stick. I want the reward that's to be had. But the sign of a good game is that you keep going back to it, and you want these rewards. It really is just the completionist in me talking that says that I want all these rewards. Because God knows I don't I don't need these things that, that I'm about to get. So we're gonna go back to that bomb machine bowling alley one more time and see if we can't get that uh that bigger bomb bag. Because this entire bomb shoe bowling alley thing becomes locked off to you once you become an adult. So we'll get one more chance to play. And this, I'm really disappointed that this is probably going to take up so much time. Oh, it's at least it's a straight shot, but the chicken's going to be right there. It's going to turn. And it's going to get hit. And, ah, there we go. But um, let's see if we can just go ahead and just throw this down and chicken move. So we can just go straight into our second playthrough. I'm very disappointed that this is going to take up so much time this end game before we pull out the Master Sword. It's just I don't... I don't want to go back and have to do this again. I want bomb juice, man. Fuck you. I kind of just want to turn tail and walk away, but you can't just quit the minigame. Uh, in Majora's Mask, if you, if you want to quit the minigame, you can just walk out the door and leave. Like, oh, a good example is the... Uh, is the happy couples I think mini game where the uh, couples that are outside in, uh, in uh, Castle Town they have their own mini game little setup in uh, in Majora's Mask and you can totally just turn tail if you're frustrated or out of money and just leave mid game. <sighs> Still don't have the biggest bomb bag and that just frustrates the hell out of me. rupees. You don't have to play if you don't want to. I, just, I wonder what the initial Japanese translation is for that. But you don't have money. Well, if you don't like it, you can get it out. But, um, one good thing, I don't think we need any more bugs, personally. So we can totally just hand this off. Get, get some rupees for that. Okay, it's a 50 rupees, so we're now we're in a better spot. So. Because we won't be needing the bugs anymore because of all the plots we've extracted the sculptures from them. Yes! Okay, so if I fuck this up, it's completely on me. I just want to try to get this to completion. I'm getting a lot better at the uh, bomb cheap as I say that, but I haven't had one of these guys pop up yet, so. Ah, it's just a little bit closer. Just a little bit closer. Come on. Just turn, 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 turn. Fuck. <laughs> it's gonna turn too soon. Jesus, so precise. Just turn. Just turn, damn it. Okay, so I wasted one. No, we have four straight shots down the middle. And chicken. Yeah. Boom. Just wait a little bit longer. So unnecessarily tedious. And chicken get hit. I have two bomb chips left. Just slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Go okay, go. Slow down. Come on, move. No! Ugh! We have one left. Okay, we gotta really plan this out. Okay, so we're gonna stop and just let it go. No, 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 no. Just don't, don't you dare. Don't you fucking dare, okay? So now we can get out of this and never come back here again because once you have the bomb chew and the bag and the part piece, there's no incentive for you to come back here. So now we have all the bomb bag upgrades, everything, so we can never have to play this horrible mini game ever again. Now you can carry the four more bombs. No. Okay. So we'll save that. And what we're going to do is we're going to straight from here. Um, um, there's no need to complete. Or try to complete rather here. Um, 
we're going to go ahead and do is get one more piece that's here that's kind of locked off from us as an adult. Um, is leading the dog back to its home. And um, it's best to do this right here because if you attract one dog, you attract it and it's stuck to you from here on out. But this is where the, the lost dog is and there really is, as far as I know, no indication that this is the dog that she's missing. I think, no, there is the one gray dog, but there are more, I don't know if this is the only gray dog we will count wonders about here. Um, I can't remember if it's this one or that one. We'll find out. And I think we lost the dog. No, okay, so we lost the dog. He's enough to go back and get a straight shot ahead. So I'm just going to walk over here. And I really, honestly, I don't have a lot to say anymore. I've kind of lost my veracity and just really my gusto for playing this game in general. Maybe it'll pick back up once I'm done doing fetch quests. That really is one of the things that was a damp on this game, is those fetch quests. I really. I don't like being an errand boy at all, and I don't like having such an overwhelming amount of things to do that just don't, really don't have any variety. Um, there isn't a whole lot. I feel like the side quests here are handled very, very, very poorly, um, just in the way that you have no connection with the characters and the rewards, especially if you're an advanced player. I'm not calling myself an advanced Yeah, I am an advanced player. I've played this game so many times that I know where everything is. I just there's no desire to keep me coming back. I don't feel like I need all these extra hearts or rupees or anything, but this is purely uh, to make sure that this is complete A to Z playthrough. And if there's any interesting textures, I want to see them, but what we're going to do next is we're going to plant that bug there, and we're going to give the running man the bunny hood. Um, get the biggest wall at first so that we can fill it all the way up to the top because um, the running man will give you an infinite amount of rupees. So no matter what size bomb uh, rupee bag you have, he will always fill it up. I've been watching a lot of Star Wars videos this morning, and this has nothing to do with Zelda whatsoever. But uh, you know, go in here, you can get the stone of agony on the left, and in the middle you can get the giant's wallet. And the only two of rewards that are left are bomb shoes and a heart piece for the getting 50. Um, so this now this will make the little rumble effect uh, kind of set off if there's um, a, a hole in the ground that you can bomb, etc. But uh, I've been watching a lot of Star Wars videos here lately, and I I think I've said this before. I really like the Last Jedi um, for what it is, and I don't know. If, that's me going against the grain, guy. I'm always a kind of outlier, like I, where I hate Ocarina, well, I don't hate it, but I, I just have a distaste for Ocarina of Time, but I love Majora's Mask, and I always feel kind of like an outlier, and it feels natural to me, but maybe I just do it just to be a hipster, I don't know, but I honestly have so much more fun uh, with Majora's Mask, and I honestly had a lot more fun than watching The Last of the Jedi than a lot of people, but I've never been a fan of this, uh, the, uh, st a Star Wars story entries. Rogue One is boring as piss, and from what I've seen of Han Solo with the, uh, outside the performance of Childish Gambino, I just have no interest in seeing it whatsoever. And it, I also have watched a lot of interviews with Mark Hamill, where, and now he's coming out more and more, and he's just saying that he did not like Luke's character. I, I didn't mind how Luke went out, but I feel like the, the disillusionment and the way that he, uh, how he became disillusioned and how he didn't agree with every, basically everything that had been taken away from his character and how he wasn't getting a good send off and how it wasn't good for the fans. I think that kind of ties back into how I feel about Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time, about how at the end of the day, you know, it's two different worlds completely, because Nintendo is a great, great company. Um, you need to put, the, to put them in the same room and uh, thought process as Disney is night and day, but this just sort of, 
I, I, don't, I don't know who the CEO for Nintendo was at the time when Majora's Mask came out, but it wasn't nearly as successful. And of course, I chalk that up to it being so, so very late in the N64's lifespan uh, that it wasn't as successful. Uh, you know? Because it, it honestly is a superior game. I've been going back and watching some of my uh, gameplay footage for uh, Majora's Mask. It's just so much more cinematic and takes such good advantage of the hardware. But any game that comes out late in the cycle of a console is just doomed prime for failure. And that's I think Nintendo kind of learned from their mistake there. Because they've gotten to where they... Um, if there's going to be a cross-platform release for a new console, they do it on both. Uh, of course, with Twilight Princess, um, it was released on both the GameCube and the Wii. Um, same thing with Breath of the Wild. Um, just giving you that option. I'm optimizing their sales while at the same time kind of giving it, making availability for everybody. But the risk that Majora's Mask took were risks that you wouldn't really see taken in the future. The Ocarina set this precedent. Like, you know, it, it was the most successful game in the franchise up to that point, critically and commercially. So, therein lies the problem, because you get this template for a game that quote-unquote works, you know. And I'm really going to enjoy having those warp songs at my disposal as an adult. Um, but you just see this formula for what, what works and what doesn't, and it set a bad precedent. And that, that I believe, uh, is strewed as it, misconstrued as it may be in the sequelized videos. Just that this game set a lot of bad precedents for enemy types, um, side mission layouts and stuff. And uh, the door was opened best with Majora's Mask. I feel like if they would have followed that template, um, that would have become the status quo. You know, and Zelda being the prestigious lineage that it is. Going back to that one section of sequelize where he's like, Oh, you're a Zelda, you're part of the prestigious Zelda. Oh, there's the, the giant I was talking about. But of course, he's no different than him. It's just a nice little uh, variance in the anime type. But, you know, you're, you're a Zelda. Why should you do anything different, you know? Uh, and it, it all just feels kind of, in hindsight, especially with my jadedness with the direction that Star Wars has taken, um, leads me to believe it's all purely a corporate decision. Now, of course, that's not something that really needs to be addressed anymore than what it is being now, me speaking right now. Um, because we have Breath of the Wild, we have A Link Between Worlds, and those games really did a, such a good job experimenting. So we're going to get a blue fire here, which is something you cannot get without the giant's wallet, because you have that cap of 200 rubies. But that'll let us get the Zora Tunic a little bit early, just because we have it in our inventory. But now we can actually go here and activate the adult sequence. And this is where the game uh, kind of pulls back a little bit and kind of disempowers you and kind of lets you start from scratch. Going back to what I said about you, you lose your um, you lose your boomerang and you lose your slingshot. You lose all these essential items that could have been used, I believe, as an adult. They just don't for the sake of elongating and kind of padding out the experience. Uh, I like really like the retexture work here. It's all very stone and solemn. Uh, it honestly feels like a true retexture polish job. Cause you can see that one, uh, the, the door for the Song of Time, and it, it just seems like a blurrier version of the textures that are around you. There's not like a dramatic retexturing here. It's just sort of a polished job for the rest of it, and it fits and works and doesn't look out of place. Um, let's see, so. We'll line that there and this will open up the door of time and there's a neat little where you can see them trying to trying to preserve resources i don't know if, it, if this was meant to be the original design or just a, like a uh, a level of detail bias here but the, if you go towards the door of time uh you'll see that it's not fully loaded and it's a, just a straight corridor and you're not, I guess you're not meant to see that, but it just it takes so long for it to load into view. Again, Nintendo kind of playing it safe, I guess, with their resources that are loading into this area because this holds one of the more important coding aspects of the game, switching the world, switching the palettes. And that's a precedent set by A Link to the Past. Um, you know, where we have 
the same world, but we kind of flip it on its head for re-exploration purposes. And that's used to, I think, in its fullest effect in Majora's Mask, because you have the same world, but it, vary it has three different variants, and then variants upon that between you rescuing each area in, in a three-day cycle that it can change. Um, but you, you know, when you really get right down to it, you have your light world and your dark world, your young world and your adult world. Uh, your light world, your dark world, you have um, uh, your variants. And uh, let's see what came. Um, there, you don't see it in Wind Waker, actually. Um, the world kind of stays the same throughout, but you see it in the, the, the light world, the dark world. It's the light world and the twilight realm and just you see you see those variants throughout so just you know kind of reusing the world with a different palette a palette texture swap and you know it's a limitation of the medium here it's used to good effect but not necessary in the others it's in a, it's most certainly in twilight princess it feels like a callback and in skyward sword especially um making you retread the areas without even you, you have your light and dark world where you have those like those um those guardians that if they see you or hear you they kill you in one hit and they snap you out and you say you have to start over um, that's the limit. that that was an unnecessary callback to the formula and not not a good game design decision no retextures on on raw that sage <laughs> but uh not not necessary because we only really see him in this one cutscene uh, I would have loved to have seen a temple of light like some sort of trial like or Link's trying to wake up, you know. Um, if I if this game were designed today, I think it'd be cool to see, uh, like say, where you're you do half the dungeon as a young Link, and then as you progress, you become older throughout it. Um, but instead, here you just kind of wake up and up, palette swap. You're a completely different model, and um, adult Link's model here is done very very well. Um, it has much much more polygons and just looks more proportionate. Um, <laughs> and they kind of fix this in Majora's Mask. The proportions are a lot better, but you kind of look like a dwarf um, as young Link. The proportions feel way out of whack. You look kind of, really, when you get down to it, you look kind of chubby and not athletic at all. But uh, it goes against you being an adventurer. And I really, the retexture work here is a lot more cohesive as adult Link. I like the work on the gauntlets and the boots and everything. Everything just looks nice and symmetrical and doesn't look like there's any textures that are missing so I think I'm gonna enjoy watching uh, Adult Link kind of play through these uh, Adult World Temple because he just looks like a better retextured model um, let's see there's only, oh this is big giant exposition dump um, God, it's so clunky it's so fucking clunky like, I feel like you could have been fed this piecemeal, but there's just this giant exp and this is another area where I save, because I hate this big, long exposition dump, because as soon as we get out of here, we're going to talk to Sheik, and he's going to give us a similar type exposition dump for, you know, going back to the what Aaron said sequelized. You're not going on an adventure, you're being taken on a tour and told to go to A, B, C, D, um, and... That's, that's done better through conveyance and exploration. Um, not speaking for games as a whole, but it, it definitely in the Zelda franchise, I find that it works better when there's conveyance as opposed to, you know, going for more for the show, don't tell. In this game, they tell you the fuck. <laughs> they tell you all the fuck. Um, because see, now, now you have your mission laid out before you, and... I'd be, he's here because he's trying to block you from going directly back before you complete your first goal. But I feel like the encounter with Sheik could have been done for the first time in uh, the forest temple area. Or Kakariko. Anywhere but here. But spacing out of the exposition dumps would have certainly helped. It looks like you won't be able to use some of the weapons you found as a kid anymore. And again, they just so poorly explained, kind of shoved to the side. I wonder what the actual Japanese translation is because I'm sure it's better explained. It always is. Um, because, ooh, that's really good retexture work on Sheik. It, the, the red eyes really pop. And uh, let's see, they kind of, they do a good job of making him look like a man, like a sort of a magical illusion. Whereas you kind of can connect the dots uh, in the original texture work that Sheik is in fact feminine in nature. But he look he, he looks like an entirely different character here. 
Um, again, tell us, that, you know, the exact order of which to beat things and where to go and a uh, completely unnecessary. I don't like being led by the nose. You know, give me some guidance. Um, conveyance is nice. Uh, I always prefer conveyance. At least in my Zelda games, you know. But, you know, first 3D Zelda, you know, they, they just didn't want people to get lost and frustrated. That's definitely what I get from this. But, again, it set a precedent for other Zelda games, you know, where you're being led by the nose. Um, there's a nice middle ground always. The Sage is a girl I'm sure you know. And then, okay, now we can go back to uh, the Game Grumps playthrough a little bit. Um, unfortunately, equipped as you currently are, you cannot even enter the temple. But if you believe what I am saying, you should head to Kakariko Village. Do you understand? Okay, there. Um, that's perfectly decent conveyance there. Just kind of see what we've got. So we're limited to bombs, Deku nuts, and you know, our fire. Let's see. I think all this will be pretty useful. Um, we'll keep the deck of nose guy. I can't see any instances where we might need dense fire. I didn't give... It's not important now, but I did, forgot to return the bunny hood. Um, so we don't, won't have the mask of truth. But again, any uh, young link trading items, uh, they kind of get tossed out the window anyway. So I, I, don't, I don't like that you can't use the mask of truth because the gossip stone still exists in the adult world. But I digress. No. Oh, it looks it looks so bad in, in, in this up -resing, but. You're just getting your first taste of, oh shit, um, bad things went down, and, and all, these redeads are unique, I guess it's because of the camera view, that, that, that they can't freeze you, just because of the way that this is a, a, a non-interactive 2D environment as opposed to 3D, the coding there, ugh, so, that's so gnarly. But a, a cool detail about the read, I guess, uh, go, oh, okay, I don't want to go off track, the coding, doesn't allow them to attack you here just because of your position. But a cool thing about the redeads is if one dies, they um, kind of go over here and they kneel by. And I kind of want to observe this animation a little bit. Oh, he disappeared. So I guess we, we want to kill more than one or get one close because they, they kind of go up to the other model and just kind of stare at it. And sometimes they kneel on it and it's not clear if they're feeding off of it. Or if they're just kind of mourning the passing, I, it's not it's not a hundred percent clear. But they always, if you kill one, they gravitate towards the dead one, and that's good for strategizing if you're stuck in a room with a bunch of them. But uh, here's a nice little area where there's a rupee drop, uh, like a twenty piece rupee drop. I think it's, yes, right here, and this is a good area for grinding for rupees. This whole area is cleaned up, very nice here. Um, because essentially you get, you get roughly 20 to 40 rupees in the original pallet area for this, where you have to break all those pots. But no, no fixture, no fixed texture details here. But here's the po shop, and I like this uh, retexture here. That there's just balls of booze everywhere. But um, this is the po salesman essentially, and he's probably one of the harder. Like by the time you you don't really need a fourth bottle. By the time you actually get the bow and are able to uh, divine exactly how to kill the pose, because it's it's not explicitly implied. Like, well, through process of elimination, I guess you kind of figure it out. Um, because the pose flee from you; they they kind of are indifferent towards you whenever you make you make one appear, uh, and you're not on the horse. But when they see you on the horse, they immediately are running away from you. So, and then the only item that you can use. As adult Link on the horse is the bow, so at least you believe, hey, I need to kill them with arrows on the back of the horse. So yeah, that, that, that's good conveyance. Um, but of course, now what's this? You know, you kind of see that Ingo has taken over this area here. And if you do, if you go immediately to Kakariko Village, uh, it'll tell you that because because um, t not Mountain Town. Ingo Talon. Talon will tell you that, or basically, you know, we'll let you know that this area has been taken over. Or Malin will let you know at night because she's kind of singing here alone. There's some good conveyance here about how you will get the horse. Um, one of the better moments in the game where it kind of it, it it seems like a side an aside. You know, I don't want to listen because I know how to do this, and 
you know. We don't want to use the horse that he gives us. We want to call a Pono, uh, which you would not have been able to have done if you hadn't followed the conveyance as Child Link. You would have never been told outright that you needed to uh, get a Pono here because you cannot, the horse is not fast enough by design to uh, get through the end of both races because Ingo becomes much more faster and aggressive. Uh, whenever you're racing him the second time around because he knows that he promises you the horse if you win because it, so you can't get any other horse than Pona that to my knowledge it just wouldn't make any sense uh, you can get two ruby drops here to kind of replenish where you've had to pay for this experience and you have to do it twice uh, derp, 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 derp. So well, you have to do it twice, and then there's just a lot of hurdles to jump through. So, and then you have to bet 50 rupees, and if you lose, then you uh, don't get to keep a Pona. And you'll just take your 50 rupees and run. Um, but a lot of good conveyances here, like um, that you'll see here in a second. I just kind of want to get a Pona and ride around for a second. I don't know if those ruby drops will happen again. Well, so I don't want to. So a little bit too soon. Uh, yeah, but they don't happen twice in a row, and our, that rumble feature's really going. I really like it. It's, it feels like a slow pulsing, which I'm not used to. Okay, let's do it. And this is how you'll get a Pona, and be able to keep her using a Pona song. Uh, you have to be conservative, but if you kind of turn into Ingo, then... Is that his name? Yeah, Ingo. He will, um, if you turn into him, he Im immediately throws him off course, and you can kind of be really conservative with your, with your carrots, and just kind of just go for that finish line, that first race, but he becomes much more aggressive the second time around, and I, I'm pretty sure that the other horse is not fast enough to win the race, because it wouldn't make any sense from a story standpoint that you would be able to get any other horse other than a Pona. And I always find it interesting that Ganondorf, you know, he kind of is still acting as this ruler here. But more could have been done, I feel like. Let's see if I can't. Okay, I might actually lose this race. He's very aggressive about trying to turn into you the same way that I turned to him in, in the first race. I think I might actually lose. So there's a turning point here. We need to turn into him. <clears throat> ah, he won. Shit. Well, that's a first. A long time. Yeah, let's do it again. And I think it let's yeah, let's just retain a Pona. Um, but I would have loved to have seen more Ganondorf. Uh, at, you know, kind of being the sovereign over this uh, wasteland that he's created. Definitely would have loved to have seen him in that. Uh, he is being so aggressive. But we've got plenty of groupies, so I'm not too worried about that. God, he's much more aggressive than I remember. Maybe I just suck. I'll this point. Maybe the Whoa! That's, the, that's your way of knowing that you've lost. Um, because he'll just kind of keep whipping the horse if you lose. I mean, if you, if he, if he loses, that is. Okay, yeah. The first step is you want to turn into him and make sure you keep going forward uh, instead of you know getting caught on his hitbox. That's the mistake that I made. But you have to, you have to take advantage of that or else you will not win. If there's another way, please feel free to let me know. No, I don't want to do this race again, so just do it as quickly as possible. A completely exhausting Epona makes those character refills so much slower, so you definitely don't want to do that. I hate how this dialogue repeats. But, yeah, so... Keep losing, I think I'll 
just give this a rest, but he kind of keeps to the outside. He's, he's trying to do the same thing that he did to him. I'm gonna lose again, so I think I might just leave this side quest alone for a bit. I swear I'm never this bad at this. Yeah. And we got one more shot before we're out of money. I'm gonna put my e stick down. I think I might help a little bit and kind of back up from the camera. Let's just get focused. Definitely don't <laughs> show myself up to be an ass because this, the title of this video is better than Grumps. We want to be better than Grumps. So let's let's show. Don't tell. This is our last shot, and then I'm going straight to Kakariko Village, and then I'll cut it off there. Just kind of keep this video a little short, and we'll go straight for the hook shot. Yeah. You know, you get to, and you can keep the horse. Okay. okay. Let's not do what we did before. Let's get. Let's let him take the lead, and then we'll try to intercept him going around the corners. Cause he kind of centers himself more. There we go. See, I tried to do it too early, and that's what kind of held me back before. But you don't want to let the carrots run out completely because then you become completely immobilized, or rather, you don't have that speed boost at your disposal for just such a long duration of time. Yeah, there we go. So, changed up our strategy a little bit, made that so much easier. So in the second race, you wanna wait to stop him until he comes around the second bend. Okay. And then here, you know, you kinda of think that you're trapped. Uh, if you re I've never tried resetting the day or night cycle. I think it does the same thing. Like he'll, he'll just stand there and will not let you leave. But, however, I'll never let you leave this ranch. And you can try everything. You can try to reset the day and night cycle. Um, there is, you know, good conveyance here that you can jump over this because it has those similar sort of spikes. But leaving here, that's uh, really your first cleansing of Ganondorf's world is that you get Pono back. Um, and it's funny, in Imajora's Mask, there's no real good indication of why you have a Pona uh, and are able to ride her as a child, but I like that that feature is there. It's a good carryover from this game. Anyway, so now we'll just take the Pona now that she's part of our assets. Let's make sure we save. We'll go straight to Kakariko Village, and there's great conveyance here without consulting a guide. Um, telling you to go to Kakariko Village. And once you arrive, we can make sure we do it during the day. Um, so we can, I can, again, I can show off those conveyance moments. Um, I think the music will still be playing too. Yeah. And the, the, there, I've noticed that there is some like variation of the tracks as an adult. They seem less whimsical and more, um, more melancholy, but, okay. Wah -ha, 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 ha Look at this guy. Ever since he escaped Hyrule Castle, he's becoming more timid, and that leads you to want to talk to this guy. I tell you, I saw him. I saw the ghostly figure of Dampe the Gravekeeper sinking into his grave. It looked like he was holding some sort of treasure. Um, again, it's telling you treasure, treasure, treasure. Um, you're in Kakariko Village to get a treasure, so okay. He says, I swear I saw Dampe the Gravekeeper. And then we'll go ahead and grab that first tra trading item. And I think it's funny that almost no one recognizes you as an adult. Um, it's only been seven years, and yeah, in re most real-life situations, you know, it's easy to recognize someone from uh, late, uh, early pubescent childhood to, you know, young adult. There's, you don't, your appearance doesn't change that radically. In fact, I'm wearing all the same clothes and have basically all the same uh, features, which is odd, but we get, this is, this starts our big Goron quest, uh, this is our first adult trading item, and it, or it tells you basically what needs to be done with it, you need to keep it for one day, basically like you did the first Cocoa Egg, um, one more thing we can do is we can go ahead and get the Song of Storms, go ahead and get that, and add that to our arsenal of songs, and that will allow us to complete the frog quest. And good conveyance here is, Grr, I'll never forget what happened on that day seven years ago. Grr, 
it's all that ocarina kid's fault next time he comes around here i'm gonna mess him up so that tells you to pull out the ocarina and it's funny that here this this, this creates a time loop where you're essentially the one that teaches yourself the song um really interesting sort of uh, back to the future moment here um only time this is really used i believe but this will fill our, our song arsenal so we can complete the the frog side quest because you need to play the song of storms last to get the uh, piece of heart so now we have all the um non-warp songs all the uh basic game world utility songs but yeah you basically have closed this time loop here uh where you now have the song of storms and this course will make this thing spin like crazy i think link does this neat little or cute little animation where he sneezes but yeah, no, no time for that if he stands here long enough. But here, we'll just go straight on here and just to kind of close off this video, uh, which essentially is circled around conveyance. Um, and you can even see it in the game Grumps playthrough where he just blasts through those text boxes. Um, you know where Dampy lives, okay? And it's, it's already been told that he's dead. So we kind of want to go into his house, his hut here, and see maybe what happened to him. Because there's no way of knowing exactly what grave he's in. Um, but it says, the gravekeeper's diary is here. Do you want to read it? Yes. Well, whoever reads this, please enter my grave. I'll let you keep my stretching seat being kick safe. And it says it's a, straight, a stretching, you know, like, keepsake. Um, and if you try, if you, like, really rack your brain... Even if you're at the end of your rope and you go against uh, Sheik's wishes to the forest temple, um, it'll kind of, you know, you, you you see the log ahead and you see that you see that the um, temple is up above you and that you can't get to it. So at least you believe that whatever is here will allow you to get to it. We know where the grave is. Basically, any grave with flowers has a reward or a hole. So, we'll just go ahead and drop down this hole. And you can do this through trial and error. Uh, especially if, if you've uh, explored any of the graves prior to this. You know that there's flowers in front of ones that you can pull back in. But there's Dampy. So, we'll give this guy a save and end it there.